Hey everyone, and welcome to another Press Enterprise High School Football Video Podcast. I'm sports editor Tim Hare, and this is Adam Roberts, and he has a giant cat on his shirt. And we're going to be talking about Southern Columbia football once again, because it is state title week. Um, first of all, let me address the shirts. This is our ugly sweater party at the Press Enterprise, so... Uh, and I'm wearing a shirt. Right, and this is really just like a long sleeve shirt, but had to be in the mood of the season. Um, so first of all, uh, let's talk about last week, West Catholic. Um, you know, impressions from the game. Well, they were fast. Yeah. Uh, it was like cool runnings. It was, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was like, oh, you just, every, every time you look, somebody was running past you. And I think that's what Southern struggled for, with it in the beginning was keeping up. Yeah. And this week, uh, I think things are going to be a little bit differently with just looking at the way the offenses were set up. But uh, last week presented their own challenges in the way that Southern hadn't really been tested quite with that speed like they had um, during the regular season. So it was, in, it was interesting to see their skill kids get, get a real test, especially this level of competition. Yeah. Yeah, the thing I was really impressed with uh, from Southern's defense was the open field tackling. Because th there were a couple times where West Catholic kids were out in space, you know, kind of able to make a move. And if that defender misses, it, it, it's probably a touchdown, but it's going for a long game. Game changing, too. And, uh, you know... Uh, Austin Nepp, Blake Marks, uh, you know, just a couple guys who were really good oh, up the field. Tackling. That Nepp kid was all over the field. Yeah. We talked about that on the sideline. Yeah, I couldn't imagine getting hit with him, hit by him every play, and and he was just sideline to sideline sweeping. And I think that's what saved Southern. I mean, not just particularly him, but was their open field tackling. Uh, you know, yeah, okay, maybe a kid could get beat here and there, but the fact that they could tackle him in open space. Definitely saved, um, you know, them points, if not the game, yeah. in the long run. And, uh, and I know Jim Roth had said it, but... Because there was a point in that game, you know, so West Catholic takes the opening kick back, and then Everybody Southern... just kind of looks at each other. Sure. And then Southern, you know, has to punt. And West Catholic put a drive together, like a 13-play driver. They're in Southern territory. And, and you kind of start to think, if West Catholic scores here, this might get ugly. Yeah, that's something you got to dig deep on, and, and, and you got to really decide, you know, if you're going to gut that out, and, and putting up a drive, and, and at the high school level, uh, it's usually, okay, you put up a drive points, and, and to really stop that drive, I think that kind of gave, um, you know, Southern something to rally behind as far as on defense, and, and realize that, hey, these guys are human, you know, it's right. not just, there's superhuman speed and superhuman athleticism that they could actually play with these kids. Yeah, you know, I, I covered Southern from 2002 to uh, 2010, and I, I saw a lot of their state playoff wins. A lot of good years. Yeah, and I don't know if I can think of a more impressive non-title game win for Southern than what they did last week. Just to be at that point where it's almost a 14 nothing game against an incredibly talented team, and to just wear them down, you know, not, not lose it mentally, and, and just kind of persevere and win. I mean, that, I was very impressed by that win. I know we only got to see that team once, but that team would have been fun to watch, you know, for 15 games. Yeah, a lot of athletes. <laughs> and uh, that they had a, they had a cornerback, the one who ran back that opening touchdown. Oh, yeah, who, Craig Jones. Craig Jones, just consistent tackler on the defensive side of the ball, and that was one of the things that surprised me the most. Usually, you get corners that you know they don't really want to tackle; they they don't want to hit. Yeah, that kid made a lot of tackles that 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 stopped you know the big plays that Southern thrives on. Yeah. Now, uh, a little bit of a different challenge this week. Um, there, there's still some athleticism there, obviously, when you're talking about Aliquippa. But uh, a little bit of a uh, different scheme that they're throwing out there. A little more traditional, pro-style yeah. offense. Um, they're going to run the ball a lot. Yeah. It, it, the, the challenge that Southern faces this week kind of reminds me of uh, when they played Clareton in 2011. You know, they, they had the, the Boyd kid who, who ended up going to Pitt and was a... You know, player of the year. Uh, you know, you know, this year uh, it's another Pitt, another, another Pitt recruit, recruit in Pew, and uh, th that's you know the, the key to the game really is uh, you know I mean he's going to get his but got got to slow him down. And I think uh, we talked about the tail of the tape from last week. I think this week is also going to be those guys playing both ways on the offensive line. Yeah, <clears throat> and not just that, a lot of kids playing both ways. Yeah, I think it was seven who play. Both and that includes uh, Kaizan Pugh, who has 30 rushing touchdowns this season. So, like you said, he's going to get his in yards, but um, it's also going to be, are these kids going to be able to play a full game on defense? And I know they're going to be rotating and stuff, and it's going to be interesting the way that they scheme to uh, Southern's wing T, but 
looking at what they did uh, earlier in the season and in the playoffs, they had trouble against Carn City's wing tee. Mm -hmm. And at times when they trailed it, I think it was entering the fourth quarter. So it's going to be interesting to see how their defense, you know, playing both ways, uh, but most of the kids are going to be able to stop Southern, who runs the wing tee probably better than anybody else. Right. Yeah, and I think the other key is uh, the, the Pew kid got a little banged up last week. Yeah. You know, some some uh, trouble with his elbow. You know, that, now that's going to happen, but when you're playing both ways, particularly uh, particularly against a team that's running as often as Southern is, and you're a defensive end who has to go up against that, and then you don't get that break, and you're getting, you know, he got 27 carries last week. You know, you, you have to figure he's going to get somewhere in the neighborhood of 25 to 30 this week. That's a lot of pounding. So he's a running back. He's a defensive end. He's got 30 rushing touchdowns. But he's a guy that will stick his hand in the dirt as well as drop back into coverage. Right. Had a pig six. So, like we're talking, has a banged up elbow. They're going to be missing that depth on def defense if he's going to have to come off to the sideline. So, it's going to be interesting to see, you know, it's obvious that they don't have a lot of depth being that these kids play both ways. It, 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 I'm curious to see who that they can compensate and put, and put in um, when they need to give him a break, you know, given that he's... He's, he's beat up. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see because, uh, you, you know, it, it was just obvious watching that last Catholic game, you know, at the end of the half, I remember their right tackle just kind of yeah. hands on knees and, you know, just just obvious physical exhaustion. Uh, and I, I wonder if Al Equipa, you know, if, if uh, Coach uh, Michaels Manick, uh, you know, sees that and maybe tries to deepen the rotation a little, particularly on uh, the defensive front. Yeah, uh, Southern, Southern loves to hit on defense. <clears throat> and the fact that they can have fresh bodies to do that, uh, it's they're gonna you know they're gonna wear on on this uh, Al Quipa team. But curious enough, you know they were they run wing tee very well. Uh, they got Hunter Thomas, Blake Marks, gonna gonna probably I'm sure accumulate their fair share of yards. Uh, Dan Short, another situation with uh, Coach Mills, mm -hmm. been with Southern a long time. Dan Short's been with the Al Quipa program a very long time. I'm curious to see how the, he schemes his defense to slow down Southern's wing tee or if he's going to be able to. And if you look at the uh, a game against Carn City where they run the uh, ran the wing tee, they gave up the big plays. So is that going to be something that you see again happen with Southern able to capitalize on big plays? Uh, it's going to be interesting to see what Dan Short can do uh, with, with that defense and with, with Poo, who's uh, Pooh's getting recorded, uh, recruited as a defensive guy to Pitt. And it's also interesting to me, you know, you talk about Southern Columbia, you talk about Aliquippa, uh, two of the most, you know, storied programs in, in the state, and yet these kids really haven't been in this position before. You mm -hmm. know, Southern hasn't been in Hershey since 2011, so th th their players are unfamiliar with, you know, playing on a stage like this. Yeah. Aliquippa uh, last went in 2012, uh, but again, you, you know, not a lot of title game experience on that field outside of the, si uh, you know, the, the guys on the sideline, Jim Roth and uh, Michael Zemanek. Now, do, you, do you think that plays a factor, just just the nerves? You know, that's something that I thought myself. You have a team that goes undefeated during the regular season, no problem. Right. But then it seemed like when you hit the district playoffs, they couldn't get over the hump. But, you know, they had this year. They won one playoff game, state title, or won one state playoff game, won the next. And it just seems like you could see that momentum building in these kids. And not just that, I, th I think they lean a lot on each other. And the way that mo you have how many seniors? Yeah, tw 25 seniors on Southern. And I think that the emotion, they just feed off of each other. It seems like one kid has one another best friend that's a senior. It seems like everybody, they're like one big family. And if you talk to the kids, they say the same thing. So it may be a surprise to see the kids uh, make it to this level with not having that state playoff postseason experience. But is it really that big of a surprise knowing how well these kids know each other? No, I mean, they gel pretty well. I, I think they have as much confidence in each other as, as Jim Roth does in, in them uh, when he runs the offense and defense. Yeah. Uh, prediction, who, who do you think wins? What do you have as a score? Yeah, I knew you were always going to put me in the spot one way <laughs> or the other. Um, I, I say Southern wins. Um, I think that if you look at Al Quipa's defense, their defense would definitely favor a team that passes the ball more. Looking at the fact that they can get a pass rush going. The fact that Southern isn't going to rely on the pass rush, it's going to mean how good Alquipa can play at the defensive line and how good their outside linebackers can do. Uh, Score-wise, I'm going to say Southern 35, Alquipa 21. Okay. Uh, I, I agree. I, I think Southern wins. You know, I just really like what I'm seeing from them and, and how well they're playing. 
Um, I think the game, you know, the Pew can run for 150, get his, um, and, and Southern can still win this game. I, I just feel like Pew's just, you know, one of the special players that you run into who's going to make that impact, uh, but maybe just not enough to actually, you know, beat Southern Columbia. Uh, so I'm looking at something in the neighborhood like 34-28, something like that, yeah. maybe like a 28-21, a one-score game. But I, I think Southern wins uh, title number seven. Uh, lucky number seven, huh? Yeah. I, I think Southern, you know, their defense has, has been what they put together so far in the, in the state playoffs has been uh, really underrated. I mean, you talk about these individual guys, but, you know, Nep really hasn't got a whole lot of attention, and, and he's, ta- like I said, tackled just about everybody that's, you know. Yeah, he's, he's a 100-tackle kid. Yeah, so um, I think they're going to have the edge coming into this game. I agree. Well, uh, that does it not just for this podcast, but for this season of High School Football Video Podcast. So for everyone who watched, uh, thank you very much. Uh, we hope to do this again next year. And uh, if you'd like more on Southern Columbia football leading up to the title game or coverage of the game, go to PressEnterpriseOnline.com and check us out. We'll be tweeting from the game. We're going to have a lot of photos. We're going to have the full page uh, title game graphic the day of. We have, We've had stories all week. We're going to have them until game day, and then we're going to have all the coverage and, and follow up afterwards. So please go to pressenterpriseonline.com for all that good stuff. So for Adam Roberts and his cat shirt, I'm Tim Heron, his ridiculous sweater, and thank you for a good season, and we'll see you next year. Take care.